Hey everyone, the artificial trainer here. Welcome in. Welcome back to my channel. So why does Juan 2.2 use 2k samplers? It's not explained very well. There's been a lot of questions. Do I need both models? Can I just use the low model? Can I just use the high model? Well, we're going to go through that today. I'm going to show you some text to image examples. I'm going to give you a text to image workflow. And then I'm also going to explain to you why the two models are split and what the functionality of each one is. And then beyond that, how do we use that functionality to our advantage to create better generations? If you go to the description, there's some links down there for downloads. If you don't have one 2.2 installed already, head down there and install the models from there. Keep watching the YouTube video while it installs. This one's kind of an educational one, so it'd be valuable for you to watch this. If you like AI video content and AI content in general, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button below. Have a lot more videos coming, especially as this stuff comes out at rapid pace. You don't want to miss anything. All right. So you can see I have my latent set to one, which is going to give us images. I have my high, my low noise model, and then I have my two K samplers here. So just a very simple prompt. I'm going to do a clown juggling bowling pins on a river raft. Okay. And then let's start with our shifts at one and our scheduler as simple. And then I'm just going to split the steps at an even 15 to start. And we'll take a look at what's going on. Okay. So using Euler simple, this was our result. And so there's something wrong here because we didn't get a good result. And most of that has to do with the scheduler. Okay, so what's going on here? So the high noise model is designed to denoise on sigma values from 0.85 to 1. The low noise model is designed to denoise on sigma values from zero to 0.85. So when we use the simple scheduler and we set our step numbers to 30 and our end step at 15 for the high noise model, we actually generated on sigma values 0.5 to one, which is not what we want. So in order to get something that's more similar to what's expected, we need to have a, a curve that's more like this, where it stays high for a while and then it drops off pretty quickly at the end. We also could just drop the amount of steps here. So we could do our split steps at like five steps for our high noise. And then we could do 25 steps for our low noise. So if we run this, we should get a better result with the same scheduler. Okay, so you can see a lot better clarity, but the prompt adherence wasn't great. And most of that is because we didn't let the high noise model run for long enough, right? Because we could only run it for five steps and even five steps may have been a little bit too much on the simple scheduler because that puts us at about 0.8 and the high noise model is trained for 0.8 for one to 0.85. So we want to give the high noise model more time. So more steps between that one and 0.85 time range in order to allow it to do more of the composition. And then, it, and then we want to hand it off after about 15 steps to the low noise model to do refinement. So for that, we'll need to find a different scheduler. So the one that is pretty popular is beta. We'll look at beta first and then we'll talk about beta 57, which is probably our best option. All right. And make sure if you want to do these tests that you're, you're changing everything throughout both. You need the schedulers to match in both case samplers as well as steps, obviously. All right. So let's run this one. So you can see for this one, we do get it to stay up in that 0.8 range for a little longer. We get kind of like a convex curve, but it still does drop off a little faster than we would like. So let's see what our output is. 
All right, some definitely some better realism. He's actually holding the bowling pins now, but we can make it even better. So in order to get this, the noise to stay higher for a little bit longer, we are going to want to use the shift. So that's what the shift is responsible, responsible for, is for shifting the noise higher. So if we change our shift to eight, it'll basically shift the beginning values up higher and then it'll drop them off a little bit steeper. So let's try that out. And I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna run this. We're gonna get our Sigma's preview and then I'm gonna adjust the steps to match what it should be based on the graph. Okay, so you can see it stays high for a lot longer. We have, now we have about, I'd say, I'd probably be comfortable going to 15 steps here. So we want to end at step 15 now. And the second one should start at 15. All right, so it's still not quite juggling the bowling pins, but you can see it's a really, really high quality generation. All right, and so now he's actually holding the bowling pins. But this one also isn't quite the best to me, right? We're starting to get a little bit of like, uh, I don't know, fuzziness around the hands, some of the lines aren't crisp. And that is because our low model is dropping off too fast. So we're getting, it, it's going from high noise, the low model isn't getting enough time to refine before it has to spit out the generation at the end of the 30 steps. So that's where beta 57 comes in. And maybe we drop the shift down a little bit, go to like five shift. And now it was a small change, but we get a little bit more time on these lower numbers. And we should probably adjust our split step to around 12 or so to give the low model a little bit more time and match the sigma curve. More crisp around the hands with this generation. We do still have some, you know, wonky bowling pins, but so the last thing I want to show you is like a scheduler where the model is just really not set up well for it. And that would be Keras. So if we put Keras in for our scheduler, let's run it. So you can see, it just immediately drops down below 0.8. So if some of you have tried Keras and it didn't work well, that's why you're not really using the high model in the right way at all. And if you have 15 steps running on low noise from the high model, it's just not going to work very well. So even to make Keras even remotely workable, we'd probably need to shift it up like 20. And even then we probably can only fit like two steps on it. I mean, maybe let's try 200. It won't even go up that high. Try 100. Yeah, even at 100, I mean, you can really only fit three steps on, on the on the high model. So if we go three steps. Now we might actually get an okay generation because the low noise model is basically doing all the work. But that's the major takeaway from this is that whatever scheduler you're using you need to make sure that the amount of steps on each model k sampler are matching up with the sigma curve All right so you can see i mean it's it's coherent but it's just like he's not on a river raft it didn't really listen at all to what the prompt was and that's because the high model is responsible for a lot of the prompt following prompt adherence and the low model is responsible for refining the details so the same, all the same stuff applies to video as well. It even applies a little bit more to video because now, you, now the model also has to worry about motion and retaining coherent motion, not just image composition. Make sure to use this node when you're setting up your workflows, when you're testing different samplers, you can actually be educated about how to select the right samplers and not just shoot in the dark to try to figure out which one works the best, especially because you can't just try one and it doesn't work very well, but you didn't have the right steps. You need to use the right step values with the right scheduler in order to evaluate whether that scheduler is the best or not. All right, so if you like this video, like and subscribe. I like diving more in depth 
about this stuff, even though sometimes these videos aren't the most popular. But hit, hit that subscribe button if you like this kind of content, you want to see more of it. I appreciate you watching this video, and I'll talk to you in the next one.